To strike or not to strike, that is the question. I remember the last winter of discontent very well. I was 17 years old. Now, just for the record, I googled this today. History refers to that winter of discontent as, and I quote, the period between November 78 and February 79 in the United Kingdom, characterised by widespread strikes by private and later public sector trade unions, demanding pay rises greater than the limits Prime Minister James Callaghan and his Labour Party government had been imposing against TUC opposition to control inflation. Some of these industrial disputes cause great public inconvenience, exacerbated by the coldest winter in 16 years, in which severe storms isolated many remote areas of the country. Blimey, that sounds a little bit familiar, right? We'll roll on 44 years to today, and it's a similarly sad state of affairs. Except this time, let's just add in... 10 years of austerity measures brought in following the Great Recession of 2007 to 2009, plus the vote to leave the European Union and the years of toxic Brexit negotiations that followed. Oh, then there's the COVID pandemic lockdown, including a furlough scheme where we were paid to stay at home and not go to work. Then there was the open checkbook to buy PPE and find a miracle vaccine. Oh, and then roll it out to the entire nation, followed by another global slowdown, plus the war in Ukraine and a new energy and cost of living crisis. Oh, and the instability of a Conservative Party in apparent meltdown, giving us four chancellors of the Exchequer in just one year and three, my, three prime ministers, including Liz Truss's hugely damaging 44 days in office. Well, the stage has been set for one almighty showdown. It feels like a giant volcano that has been building up pressure for a decade, which has finally started to erupt. And here we are, train drivers, tube drivers, civil servants, firefighters, and then even teachers, nurses, junior doctors, all striking over pay and conditions. Now, they are good, decent, hardworking people. And let's be honest, although these strikes are hugely disruptive to so many people in this country, I'm sure most of us can understand why they are unhappy. With inflation raging at 10%, everyone's pay is worth less and less in real terms. And in so many of these striking sectors, pay rises, if any, over the last decade, have not kept up with inflation, and so people are generally worse off. Now, it should be said that there are many people, millions, of course, around the UK who have also been feeling the pinch for a very long time, but they can't strike or won't strike. So what can be done? However much we may try to understand the situation, should the government or any government, for that matter, allow strike action where the knock on effect for so many of us prevents us from getting to work or going about our daily lives? in the case of train drivers or tube drivers, for instance, or worse still, potentially put lives at risk in the case of nurses and doctors. Should such, such strikes actually be banned? Now, I'm sure a lot of us have had that thought at some point. I can bet most of the parents walking around my local park on Wednesday when they should have been at work and their kids should have been at school were thinking just that. But could it actually happen? And should that ever really become law? Could it actually ever work? If it was to happen, of course, measures would clearly need to be put in place to ensure that all parties sat down regularly and created a sensible, honest, ongoing dialogue so that things never came to some crazy head that made people strike. But then I'm thinking, shouldn't that be happening anyway all the time? Do you, like me, wonder just how we got to this position? There is, of course, some political game playing going on here. This government looks pretty weak right now, and Rishi Sunak is being tested. What kind of leader is he? Can he take on the might of the unions in 2023? Can he find a solution to what seems like an ever-growing situation? Time will tell. Money is tight. The economy is being squeezed badly. A week is a long time in politics, but I fear this is going to be a very long month.